announcement. Just a friendly reminder to all you would-be bigots out there. Ghouls are people, too. Humans who've been exposed to an ungodly amount of radiation and haven't had the good fortune to die. The capital wastelands many ghouls. Leave your prejudice at the door and your pistol in its holster. Ah, yes. One important caveat, kiddies. Those barrel ghouls that prefer the dark day gun. You've still got plenty of water. Look, the Brahmin is loaded with it. What you gave us won't last more than a few days. Hey, it isn't my call. I just take the water where the Brotherhood tells me. Don't shoot the messenger, you know? Look, they're giving the water away. What do you care whether you leave it all here or somewhere else? I don't really care. I mean, you'll have to take it up with those boys. You're not leaving here with that water. We need it. We're... Can you believe these Brotherhood assholes? They won't give us enough water to last until the next shipment. We're not going to let them leave with that water, though. We need it. What are they going to do, anyway? Kill us for stealing some free water? Uh... You're probably right. They wouldn't think twice about murdering the lot of us, would they? We'll just have to make do until we can organize our own water caravans and get out from under the Brotherhood's thumb. Taking it. Yes? Thank you. Sierra Petrova does the name. Good to see a new face in Girder Shade. I take it you're here to check out my Nuka Cola collection and take the tour. I have one of the. No. The best Nuka Cola collection in the Capital Wasteland. Heck, I've won the Nuka Cola Fan Club Collection Award for the last 10 years in a row. Yep, I'm the president, the recording secretary, and the treasurer. Once a year, we gather here in Girder Shade to have a cook-off using Nuka Cola and the recipe. Last year, I went with my poached roach and Nuka sauce. Delicious. Well, only two right now, me and Ronald. But membership is open to the public. You can join if you like. Ronald? Oh, I'm sorry. I figured you met him already. He usually chats with people who enter Girder Shade. He's my neighbor and my protector, as he calls it. Imagine if some nasty raider wanted to take my stuff. He'd show them a thing or two. He's such a sweetie. You should talk to him. He's a darling, always watching out for me, and more importantly, keeping the collection safe. Like once, there were these raiders that came by. There were three of them, and their leader was named, like, Lugnut or something. So they, like, kicked in Ronald's door, and he was like, blam, with his gun, and one of them got all splattered. Then the other one tried to, like, hit him all in his head with some club. And Ronald was so cool how he dodged it and shot the guy in the face. Then the lug nut guy was in Ronald's face with the I'll kick your ass stuff. And Ronald was like, hell no. And he punched the... Oh, sorry. I get carried away sometimes. Well, you should definitely talk to Ronald. I bet he'd like to meet you. He's such a sweetheart. I sure did. Want to take it now? How can you resist? This stuff is so cool. Well, come on then. Let me show you around. But no free Nuka Cola until the end of the tour. When Nuka-Cola was invented by John Caleb Braverton in 2044, it quickly became the world's most popular soft drink.
the Wonder Drink soon drew a dedicated following, which prompted the Nuka-Cola Corporation to release many promotional items like these. By 2067, a Nuka-Cola machine such as this rare, pristine model could be found on almost every street in America. Even in today's crazy world, Nuka-Cola is still the number one choice of refreshment among Armageddon survivors. As promised, here is a little pick-me-up. An ice-cold Nuka-Cola. Just look at the frost on the bottle. So cold and delicious. Pardon me. <clears throat> I tend to lose myself when I hold on to a Nuka-Cola. Before I get to the little proposition I have for you, let me tell you a little bit about Nuka-Cola Quantum. Well... Right before the bombs fell, the good folks at Nuka-Cola developed what they hoped was an improvement on the original formula. Calling it Nuka-Cola Quantum, it was said to have twice the calories, twice the carbohydrates, twice the caffeine, and twice the taste! Well, the flavor certainly wasn't the issue. The public was just split on the unique feature of the Quantum's appearance. You see, to make it stand out on store shelves and to give it that extra kick, the formula called for a mild isotope. The effect was a drink that not only boosted your energy, but also glowed with a bright blue light. Oh no, only ever so mildly. No ill effects were ever recorded. Well, it does have the unique property of making your, um, your pea glow. I love the stuff! I can't get enough of it! I thought I was hooked on regular Nuka-Cola, but the Quantum beats it by a long shot. I've got to have more! That's right. You bring me Nuka-Cola Quantum, and I pay you. Handsomely, I might add. For every bottle you bring me, I pay you some caps. You know, for expenses. But if you're super cool and find, like, enough bottles to fill my Nuka-Cola machine, 30 and all, I've got a super secret cool prize for you. Oh, goody! I can taste the quantum already. Good luck to you, sweetie. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Hey, pal, what were you doing in Sierra's place? That better be all you were checking out. I don't like guys messing with my woman. Well, that's likely because it's none of anyone's business but ours. She's one hot lady, though, am I right? Wow, you are as naive as you look. How do I put it? I'd love to do the horizontal bop with her, you know, plow her bean field. Come on, kid. New to this stuff, huh, kid? Well, let's just say that she has something I want to get a hold of. That's where you enter the picture. I know she's asked you to find her some Nuka-Cola Quantum. Heck, she asks everyone that wanders through here. What I'm proposing is you still look for the drinks, but instead of bringing it to her, you bring it to me. She'll be so impressed that I got all the Nuka-Cola for her, she'll melt in my arms like butter. I pay you the same she was going to pay, and everyone's happy. Thought you might. Good. I'll see you soon, then.
My, 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 you certainly do look a little bit worn out from your travels. Oh, just look at my terrible manners. I'm Agatha. It's so nice to meet you. Now, what brings you all the way out here? Honestly, there's nothing much out here. Looking for sand? Rocks? We have plenty of that. You're welcome to look around this area, of course. Don't let me dissuade you. I'm just trying to save you some time. My husband built this place way out here for a reason. Rest his soul. Well, that's kind of you to say. Yes, he's gone. After he built this place, we spent many happy years together. We decided to cut off contact with the outside world and just depend on each other for comfort and company. Oh, oh, goodness, no. I have a supply caravan that passes here maybe once a week. I trade with him for whatever I need, and I stock up enough till they return. Well, I always have my husband's old radio set to fall back on. I used it once in an emergency when a group of raiders was getting a bit too close for comfort to my house. Otherwise, I use it to broadcast my so-called music I play for my homemade violin. Oh, you are a clever one. Yes, that's exactly the problem that I have with it. It doesn't quite play all of the notes correctly, and I have to constantly tinker with it. Yes, my husband was very proud of the setup. He tinkered with that thing for years to get it working. I've tried to use it to get whatever I need, but I've never gotten a reply. Thank you. Well, my husband had his hobbies, I'm afraid mine was making that sorry instrument. I only wish I could replace it with something better. But now that you mention it, um, yes, there is. My trading depends on my violin. Without it, I have nothing to play, no way to make music. If you can bring me a violin, a better one, I'd feel much more secure. Yes, very sad, isn't it? Sad to think that no more musical instruments will ever be made the old way ever again. <sighs> well, fortunately, I know where perhaps the last real violin in the world exists. If you give me your word that you will recover it, I will tell you more. Oh, I don't think I've been this happy in years. I have some information that may help you, at least a place to begin. It all starts with my great-great-grandmother back in 2077 before the bombs fell. Of a kind, yes. Hilda sent a good deal of letters to my great-grandmother Mary, who passed them on, and so forth. I suppose the correspondence could be considered a diary of sorts. It certainly is a long time. That precious instrument has been through a lot. Anyway, Hilda was quite a special woman, classically trained and exceptionally talented at the violin. Her pride and joy was her Stradivarius violin. I can only imagine how exquisite this instrument must have been. When the war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Tech into Vault 92. They claimed the vault would be dedicated to preserving musical talent. Vault Tech was always promoting the vaults being used for the preservation of the arts and all that nonsense. Hilda couldn't pass on a chance to meet many of the other musical talents of the world, so she accepted their invitation. Then the bombs fell, the vault was sealed, and my family never heard from her again. She kept it in a special pressurized case. Inside the case is the perfect temperature and humidity for the instrument. If the case is still functioning, 
the Stradivarius would be in perfect shape. Hilda Stradivarius was named the Swa Stradivarius. All of them had names. That's what I want you to get. That's the catch. I have no idea where it is. I'd suggest making your way to Vault Tech headquarters in the D.C. ruins. That would be a good place to begin. Good luck! She was quite a special woman. Hilda was her name. Classically trained and exceptionally talented at the violin. Her pride and joy was her Stradivarius violin. I can only imagine how exquisite this instrument must have been. When war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Tech into Vault 92. They claimed the vault would be dedicated to preserving musical talent. Happily, she accepted. After she entered Vault 92, the bombs fell. And the story as I know it ends. Not too much, I'm afraid. It was fabricated way back in 1714 by a famous Italian craftsman named Antonio Stradivari. He had made a bunch of Stradivarius violins, actually, and each one was individually named over time to identify them. They are regarded as the most outstanding instruments ever made, and no two sound alike, they say. Incredible! Since the bombs fell laying waste to most of the world, it may be safe to say that this could be the last surviving violin of its kind. Well, from my great-great-grandmother's diaries, I have deduced that she had a special pressurized case created for it. Hopefully, the Swa Stradivarius was in the case when she... Well, you know. Well, okay. I'm sorry. I wish I did. All I know is that Vault Tech intended it to be a protective environment for the world's musical talent. When the bombs fell, the vault was sealed and the rest is a mystery. Perhaps when you find it, you can find some sort of a record of what occurred inside. From what I gather, it's located in the ruins of D.C. I got the location from one of the supply caravans. They told me it had extremely high security and something they call a main frame inside. I'd imagine it's quite dangerous. I'd be careful if I was you. Be careful. I don't want to be responsible for getting you killed.